I wanted to ask you about Miles. Having coached against him, how big a factor was his rim protection in your scouting reports when you were preparing for the Pacers? And what have you learned about him now that you've coached him yourself? Yeah, I've, I had this, these you know thoughts in my mind about Miles as an opposing coach, like you mentioned. I always knew he was a very good player, a rim protector, uh, can stretch the floor, can attack the rim, you know, like you saw a little bit uh, uh, last night and the night before. Uh, but uh, but he's 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 I never thought he wasn't very good or anything like that, but he's even better than I thought, meaning like he's versatile out there. He can defend more than just one position. He can switch on to guys. Uh, I love his rim protection uh, on, on offense. He's he's doing great on the weak side and spacing and he's diving when he's supposed to. He's cutting when he's supposed to shooting the three when he's supposed to, and he can handle out there on the perimeter a little bit. So, so coming in, I knew he was a very good player and now coaching him, uh, he's even a better player than I thought. Bob Kravitz. Yeah, Nate, I've got a big picture sort of question, but who do you count as some of your primary mentors through your career and how has each of those people shaped you as a coach? Yeah, I've had a number. Um, I've had a number of them. I had really good coaches when I was young, um, starting with my mom and dad. I had a very good high school coach, very good college coach, um, you know, then getting involved into the into the pro game, um, you know, being able to, to work with and, and, and learn under Nick Nurse. You know, we spent a lot of time together in the in the minors and then a couple of years together obviously in Toronto so I was able to learn a lot there definitely a, a mentor um, but I have I've had a, I've had a number of, of very good coaches throughout my life and I think that's why I wanted to become a coach because it always looked like you know something that that I wanted to do because I looked up to them so well uh, throughout my life and I still look up to all of my former coaches and, and my mentors. And, and I still try to continue to learn as much as I can every single day. Just to follow up quickly, um, is the G League a, a unique proving ground for coaches? Are there challenges in the G League that you might not uh, face in other, you know, in college or, or wherever? There are, there are. And back when I was in, in, the, in the minors in the, in the D league, there wasn't the size of the coaching staffs that there are now. So there was just, you know, two, maybe three of us. So you had to be very versatile. You had to be good with the video and scouting reports and travel coordinator and assistant coach and head coach and player development coach. So I, I think that background um, in the minor leagues is very important. Uh, in the D-League, the rosters would change constantly. You had to coach new players all the time. So your, your, your use of time for your teaching was always very important. Your, your practices, your shoot arounds, your film sessions, it was just constant, constant teaching. And you're on the go with a changing roster. So all of those things, you know, every level is extremely hard to coach at. High school, college, NBA, G-League, every level has its challenges. Uh, but those were some of the things that, that the D-League um, could offer and help you become a better coach in. Thanks. Jeremiah? I don't think you had the opportunity to have a practice since maybe Christmas Eve. So how much did you value a day like today? And, and maybe what was kind of the point of emphasis? Yeah, we, we just wanted to be very efficient in our practice today. Started with a film session, a session and then we were on the court uh, just for a little bit of time. So just cleaning up things that we needed to, um, you know, keep improving and, and opening up our, our offensive playbook. Um, and just, you know, all the little things through throughout the course of the game that we showed film on that we want to continue to get better at um, for our team and then uh, our upcoming opponent. Pat? Hey, Nate, I know this season's still extremely young, but when you're a new coach and you've got players that are learning a new system and new principles and all of that, does getting off to a, a relatively strong start like this help with things like confidence and buy-in? Yeah, the guys, it's a good group. It's a good group, that, and it's a good question. But the guys of, you know, they entered that way um, on the first day of practice. Their mindset was really ready to go. Um, they, they, they were. It's, it's a smart group. I know you guys hear me say that over and over. It's a group that was really looking forward to getting this season started. That's a group that's been together. So, 
So a lot of it is, is them just, you know, sticking together, um, playing hard and they're playing extremely hard and, and we can continue to do more and more things as these, as these games come at us, changing things up more and more. So it is, it's a, it's a fun group to coach and a very determined group. They, they do. They want to get better every day. Every film session, try to get a little bit better. Every practice, try to get a little bit better. Uh, and especially uh, during the course of the games. And Sterling. Hey, Coach. Uh, they say you learn more from losing than winning. After looking at the tape from last night, what did you learn about your team? Yeah, that they've got a ton of fight. That it's never going to be due to lack of effort. Uh, on the wins and, and the loss, it's it's our guys are fighting and they're and they're playing hard for each other. Obviously, there's things that that we wanted to attack differently last night and, and things that we needed to do differently. But but the effort is there. That's what I continue to learn about this team. The fight is there. I can I can see it in their eyes and the in the timeouts and in dead ball situations and and anytime we get to to huddle up together, uh, they're a team that that wants to do well for each other. They really are. Uh, Michael McCleary. You, know, you you said you were su almost a little bit surprised by how good Miles was, uh, you know, even though you thought he was pretty good already. Uh, but does does the way that he plays down low uh, affect the way that you ask your guards to play defense, maybe a little bit more pressure? Yeah, yeah. Like Miles has to, he has to be there. He And at times our guards are going to get broken down to the rim. It's going to happen. Uh, it is, it's going to happen. And that's what the, the use and, and the advantage of having Miles Turner and, and Domas down there. There's the, those are two bigs that, that can protect the rim uh, with their verticals and just their presence. You know, Miles is doing a good job, not only in his block shots, but he's deflecting a lot of passes as well. So there's a lot of pressure that gets put on, on our bigs and, and at every big, uh, you know, in the NBA, there's a lot of times where there's a, great guard coming at you downhill and you got a really good big man that's behind you. So you got to play two guys a lot. You got to, you got to be able to play the ball and play your man and you have to be very active and smart to do that. And that's what, uh, that's what miles and, and Domas both are. Tony East. Yeah, Nate, I saw Cassius Stanley out on the, the court last night, about 30 minutes after the game run and getting some shots up as his career is progressing I know it's still early but what have you seen from him and, and his growth so far he's ready he's ready I'm going to call his number here very soon to to get into these games um, and, and he's just putting the time and in the work in he's asking the right questions he's spending a lot of time on his shooting uh, super athletic as you know he's smart and knows how to play uh, the big thing when he gets into the game is just to focus on the defensive end, just to be the best defender that he can make open shots and run the floor, you know, to keep it very simple. And uh, our guys on our team, Malcolm and, and Victor, are spending a lot of time with him as well, uh, helping him through uh, through this season. That's that's moving along very quickly. 